first of all uh, we should know what is ethics uh, these are the mor moral principles of right and wrong i can research what is right and what is wrong right uh, these are not absolute like may vary by person by time or place so <clears throat> maybe there are some of the uh, principles which are right in one society but wrong in another society are right at one time and wrong at another time are right in one uh, at one place and wrong at another place but uh, when it comes to research ethics so you would remember that uh, we said that uh, like research community that is one community so it is not is a global community it's not a regional community so they are like rights and wrongs are uh, similar across the whole community so we cannot say if something and research is right here that would be wrong somewhere else or what is right somewhere else would be wrong here because uh, as i said research community is a global community so uh, this uh, like uh, right and wrong that wouldn't be uh, changing in research right so as it does change or vary in society otherwise like uh, something right at one place might be wrong at another place but it is not going to happen in research so you'll have to keep in mind that the ethics and research those wouldn't vary those would remain uh, the same yes there might be some of the rules which are uh, <clears throat> maybe chalked down uh, by some of the organizations and they they are supposed to be followed at at one particular place uh, or in one particular project and those might not be general rules so uh, yes that relaxation can be there now uh, what are the research ethics uh, like the the ethics which we have of right and wrong or the principles of right and wrong those are applicable in research as well and we incorporate ethical ethical principles in into research practice right uh, those should be observed at all stages and by all those involved from inception of research through to completion and publication of results and beyond right so uh, the ethical principles are are, uh, are incorporated in research practice now when should those be applied those should be applied at all stages of research we, we can't say that are we applied in the beginning are we applied at the end are those are applicable at the uh, stage of publication or at the stage of thesis writing no those are applicable from the beginning and uh, go till the end of the research right so those ethical considerations are very important now we just come across some of the uh, guidelines which are provided by research council uk uh, research council uk like economic and social research council uk uh, provides some of the gui guidelines for uh, research so let's uh, just have a look at uh, some of the principles research should be designed reviewed and undertaken uh, undertaken to ensure integrity and quality research staff and subjects must be informed fully about the purpose methods and intended possible uses of the research what their partic participation in the research entails and what risks if any are involved right so uh, exceptionally like some variations may be acceptable now uh, what you uh, require is like the subjects and staff they must be informed fully right about the purpose of the research about the methods and intended possible uses of research are also informed to the participants and subjects uh, and, and staff that is conducting the research and uh, they should also be told about what their participation in the research entails and if there are any risks they they must be informed that risk as well right so these things are all uh, informed to the uh, staff and subject right now sometimes like uh, there are some exceptions are uh, some variations so variations can be for example if you are uh, performing or if you are conducting a research that is uh, really technical and the the purpose of that research or maybe uh, the methods are not uh, 
understandable by the participants. So uh, you you may just inform them in uh, layman's language because they wouldn't be able to understand those technicalities of research. So that's what exceptional uh, case we may have. Now, the next is the confidentiality and information supplied by research subjects and the anonymity of respondents must be respected. Now, keep in mind research subjects means here participants, right? So the uh, confidentiality, that is the, uh, uh, you can say, key component of ethical issues, like uh, the subjects who are participating in the research, they must, uh, they, they must uh, uh, their views and their anonymity, that must Okay, so the next is uh, research participants must participate in a voluntary way, free from any co uh, uh, coercion. Now, we have already talked about uh, this, the uh, uh, participants, they, they, they should be free, like you shouldn't force them to participate in research. So whenever, like you, you uh, explain the research or uh, the methods and purpose of the research. If someone uh, wants to uh, withdraw from the research, so there shouldn't be any restriction, right? So that is very important that participants, they are uh, free to join the research or to withdraw from the research. Now, harm to uh, participants must be avoided. Avoidance of harm, extends to the family, kin, uh, community groups uh, should be uh, unreasonably uh, reasonably excluded from research, right? So like uh, the participants shouldn't be harmed in any way. Their uh, family, their kin and community groups, all of them, they should be, I can say, uh, the free of any sort of harm, right? And they shouldn't be dragged like uh, in the in the problems which uh, which can uh, create any sort of harm for them. Now the next is the independence of research must be clear. Uh, any conflict of interest or uh, partiality must be explicit. Right. So uh, the participants and uh, even the audience they must know that there is the research is totally independent. There is no conflict of interest or partiality. Right. So like. As we have already talked about this, that research that is uh, purely objective, it is not subjective. And if we try to get any sort of benefits, be it uh, financial or uh, otherwise, so we must, uh, you can say, explicit, explicitly state it. Like if there is any uh, sort of paid uh, project or whatever, so that must be uh, uh, known to the participants, like the uh, the organization that is conducting this research and what that is uh, aiming for, what is the purpose behind this research, so all of those things should be exp uh, explicitly stated. Okay, <clears throat> now what, what sort of risks can be there in research? Now in social science research, risks are diverse. Now potential physical or psychological harm, that is one of the aspects. Uh, discomfort or stress, that can also be uh, some uh, diverse risks which uh, participants can have. Uh, it also has, uh, has disruption or damage to, for example, uh, subjects' rights and dignity, a subject's personal and social standing, uh, uh, individual's privacy, personal values and beliefs, a subject's links to family and wider community, a subject's occupational status and position, are uh, implications of revealing uh, illegal sexual or deviant behavior, right? So uh, these are different risks, like uh, uh, all of these should be protected, like uh, if subject uh, doesn't want uh, him or her to be 
uh, named uh, so that like uh, subject should be kept uh, anonymous in the research and more like at most of the time rather uh, in research we don't uh, deal with the subjects or participants with their names rather they are uh, subjects for us they are participants for us so we, we don't draw links with with their family with their kin or we don't just uh, tell their life stories to the people with their with their names like you you would remember we had talked about uh, phenomenology uh, uh, research in uh, like qualitative design or we talked about narrative research so their like narratives and uh, those uh, narration of phenomena are in you can say interviews like uh, the the views which we have so all of them they should be presented anonymous because the subjects are important only uh, because of their views not because of their names so if we reveal their names if we reveal their identities so they might have these sort of risks and these should be avoided okay then uh, we have already talked about this that uh, voluntary participation that should be the basis of uh, selecting the subjects the subjects must be able to provide information uh, informed consent right so informed con consent that is important uh, like you you just uh, you tell them that they are, they are going to be part of uh, research and uh, the previous things which we have discussed that what is the purpose of this research how the results will be used where the results will be used uh, can there be any sort of uh, harm or you can say threat to privacy of the uh, subjects so all of that should be informed to the participants now behavior observed in public setting is assumed to imply agreement to being observed right so if uh, sometimes like you observe someone in public right so that uh, should also be informed to the participants now you can inform the participant beforehand or later on that they are going to be observed right uh, sometimes like a researcher they uh, fa the researchers face a difficulty that if they inform their subjects that they are being observed so they would like the subjects and the participants they would start uh, behaving differently so maybe uh, there are certain exceptions like you don't inform the subjects uh, at the moment when you are observing them that they are being observed you you just inform them beforehand that they would be observed sometimes in public as well uh, uh, so that like they are not conscious at the moment when you are observing them because when they become conscious so their behavior that that might change or they they, they might start behaving differently because of that uh, consciousness that they are being observed so like at the beginning of the at the inception of the uh, research when we uh, the, you can say uh, ask for the consent of the participants so at that time the, the participants should be uh, informed that uh, they, they would be observed in public sometimes right so the time that shouldn't be uh, told exactly so that uh, like they, they don't become conscious now subjects uh, contacted after being observed in public setting must be informed they were observed in public setting now if like you you haven't told the subjects while they were being observed you can later on uh, tell them that they were being observed in, in that particular setting performing that particular task subject must be free from reasonably anticipated physical or emotional harm right so uh, and we have already talked about this that they uh, they should be uh, like any any sort of harm that should be avoided and subjects they, they must not be exposed to any physical emotional psychological harm now uh, what is informed consent uh, like what we can uh, tell the participants to get their consent uh, the participant should be informed about purpose of the study how respondent was selected like how how the participant was selected how results will be used then voluntary participation in the study or any part of it like they should be told that they are volunteers and uh, they they can opt for a part of study or they can uh, they, they they are supposed to be part of the full or complete study right but they they must be told that they are volunteers and they can withdraw at any time now they can 
keep any incentive if they withdraw from the study right so like they, there shouldn't be any sort of restriction like when if like in some study the participants are given uh, any sort of incentive so the participants should feel free to withdraw without having the fear of uh, you can say uh, uh, giving back incentives right so uh, they must be told about the confidentiality of, of their responses uh, they should have the contact uh, contact information of the researcher like uh, they, they must know who is conducting research so that uh, whenever they want to contact the researcher they uh, can easily access him or her right so these are the things which we uh, generally uh, in, uh, tell to our uh, uh, participants so that they uh, they can just decide whether they want to be part of this uh, research project or uh, research study or not now um, those were related to like those uh, previous uh, ethical issues and uh, how they could be handled were related to the participant uh, participants and now we have some of the uh, uh, issues which are part of academic misconduct or dishonesty and we should avoid them uh, we have talked about them uh, in different topics but here again we are going to have them like first of all of plagiarism now you, uh, what is plagiarism it is using others work without acknowledging their contribution right now you would remember that uh, we discussed that uh, if you take any idea from someone any uh, previous research or researcher without citing uh, the name or acknowledging the name of that researcher so uh, taking that idea would fall under plagiarism similarly if you take words from anyone like you are taking some chunks of of text from someone but you are not mentioning the name uh, or acknowledging the name of that previous researcher again you are doing the same thing that is you are doing plagiarism now uh, what if you are taking uh, text from someone right <clears throat> and you are paraphrasing it in your own words right and you are not again citing the source or the writer or the researcher from whom you are taking it is again plagiarism right so taking idea from someone and owning it is plagiarism taking a text or textual uh, chunk from anyone and owning it is again plagiarism and taking text from someone uh, a piece of text from someone and rewriting it uh, without acknowledging is also plagiarism like this is a, a misconception that people think that if we paraphrase something if we write it in our own words so that would be our work no uh, if you, you have taken it from somewhere and then you are paraphrasing it so it's your moral obligation to uh, cite or uh, to refer to the source or to the researcher from whom you are taking uh, that, that particular uh, piece of text or the, you can say uh, the, the idea right so uh, I've just mentioned three things like taking idea from someone taking uh, some text as it is or taking text or idea and putting it in your own words uh, without citation now all of them would be uh, uh, plagiarism right but if you cite like you take idea from someone and you cite the the researcher and the uh, uh, research so that is not plagiarism then so is acknowledging uh, is with the due acknowledgement so no issue in, in citing similarly in, uh, while you take uh, any chunk of text from someone and you acknowledge the uh, source or acknowledge the uh, researcher so again it is fine in research uh, it is done uh, in this way and if you take something from someone and you put it in your own words like you paraphrase it again if you if you are citing it properly, if you are acknowledging the, the source or, or the researcher, so there is no issue, no harm in 
uh, doing that, right? So the main thing is whatever you take from anyone, you'll have to cite it properly, right? Okay. Next is fabrication and falsification. Now fabrication is making up results and recording or reporting them, right? So uh, the results are actually being uh, cooked, right? Those are being made up. Uh, those are not the results which actually came out of data. Rather, you are changing them according to your own desire, right? So this is called fabrication. Now I can give you a simple example. For example, you have taken, uh, you, have, you have filled a questionnaire and uh, that questionnaire uh, gave you certain results, but the results were not of your uh, uh, liking or of uh, your desire or wish. So what you do, you change the results yourself. You change the percentages. You just, uh, you can say, increase or decrease percentages of certain items or of certain questions so that the results suit your own desire of, of uh, results of research, right? So uh, that, that would be, that, that is called fabrication. And you know, this is under, uh, this falls under the, uh, you can say, adding up uh, academic misconduct or academic dishonesty. Now, similarly, falsification is uh, uh, also uh, academic misconduct or dishonesty. Uh, now, falsification is manipulating research material, equipment, or processes, or changing or omitting data or results such that the research is not accurately represented in research record. Right? Like you are collecting data, you are using certain tools or materials, and you manipulate those tools or those materials. Right? So you you just disturb their values or their scales and you collect data with that so that uh, uh, the data can be tempered and whenever you are uh, presenting uh, that data or those results from the data in your research report so those are not uh, represented correctly so this is called falsification right like in fabrication you you have uh, original data but you change the results according to your own desire or wish. And in falsification, the, at the data stage, you started playing with the data. You started just manipulating it, right? And that manipulation can be uh, with multiple uh, like sources. You can just change the, uh, uh, you, you can falsify the data collecting tool or equipment, or you can uh, maybe sometime uh, uh, falsify the data collection process right are the results which you are using like you omit some parts of of uh, data or of result uh, of results so that uh, when you are writing your report research report so uh, those parts are not uh, represented right and the purpose behind that is like the uh, the the things which, which you don't want to be part of record those are not part of record right and that is called falsification. Again, it is not to be done, and uh, uh, to, to be like uh, uh, to to show honesty, these things are to be avoided. And if you remember, we while talking about uh, uh, features of uh, a good researcher or characteristics of good researcher, uh, we just uh, talked about uh, honesty as well. That the researcher should be honest should be truthful and he should uh, report whatever is there and he should be open-minded to accept that uh, the results of the that came from data are actually not according to his own uh, uh, you can say uh, understanding of the phenomena rather those are different so uh, the hypothesis which he had that that is refuted right so if you if you understand something in a in a particular way and data or results are not supporting it so you shouldn't manipulate uh, data or uh, results rather you should state that uh, whatever you you uh, you had as your hypothesis that has not been uh, uh, testified that that has not been you can say approved rather it has been refuted now 
Then is non-publication of data. Uh, this is again academic dishonesty or misconduct. That the data is not included in research because it does not support the desired outcome. Right? So you don't give data uh, with your research uh, because you think that if someone would verify uh, the, the results, so uh, like it would be uh, creating problems or it would be, you can say, uh, uh, changing the out outcome of the study. Now, the next is uh, faulty data gathering. We have already talked about it that uh, while uh, collecting data, like uh, uh, the process or the equipments or the tools, those are manipulated, right? Or collecting data from participants who are not complying with requirements of the study, that would also be giving you faulty data. Uh, using faulty equipment, equipment we have just uh, talked about it treating participants inappropriately right so uh, like if you are having experimental research and you are giving them uh, giving the participants treatment and you are uh, uh, pro providing inappropriate or faulty treatment that would again be uh, you can say academic dishonesty Re recording data incorrectly like if you are recording data but you are not recording it uh, properly uh, so again that would be uh, under the, the same heading that is academic dishonesty. Now, you can also have poor data storage and retention. Now, uh, like uh, if at later stage that data is uh, required for verification uh, or others they require data for verification. So your data that is not retrievable or that is not properly being stored. So again, it would be academic dishonesty. You can never later on say that actually i had stored data somewhere and uh, now it is not retrievable so the results cannot be verified so your own study which you conducted that would be actually having certain ethical issues now misleading authorship uh, now this is very common like people they uh, don't contribute in uh, studies but when it comes of a publication so their name that would be put there uh, in the list of authors now that is actually taking credit of, of uh, something which you have not done or uh, like uh, is credit of the uh, of very little contribution or no contribution to the study. So uh, this is again academic dishonesty or uh, misconduct because uh, if you uh, like taking credit, credit means you have done something uh, in, in the research. But if you haven't done it, so you shouldn't take credit for that. So uh, if you, you write, for example, a research paper and someone has helped you and you just want to give credit to that person, so uh, the person should be, uh, you can say, uh, a co-author in the list of authors. Uh, but if, if you think that the person hasn't contributed enough, so it was only just maybe sort of discussion or some technical support and uh, that uh, that is not uh, you can say contribution of a level which can uh, give uh, the rights of authorship to the uh, to the person so it's not uh, you can say uh, binding on you to just make that person author if there is no contribution or if they, there is only sort of technical assistance or maybe just discussion on certain points but yes if someone is contributing so then you cannot take the credit away you'll have to just make the person author if like uh, the person has helped you in writing, if the person has helped you in maybe data analysis, or if the person has helped you uh, in doing the things which actually you couldn't do and uh, were required to be uh, done by some expert or to be interpreted by expert and if some, uh, someone has uh, helped you in that. So you'll be just uh, acknowledging the person by uh, putting their name in the list of authors, right? Uh, now the next is, uh, uh, there is a question like who should be, the, uh, should be an author? Now authorship uh, should involve only those who contribute directly. Uh, in publication of thesis or dissertation, like if after your dissertation, if you want to uh, publish your thesis, so who is the author? Now the student is the author. Right, because it is work of the student and the uh, supervisor may be listed as secondary authors like co-authors or secondary authors 
like if you want to publish your thesis you your supervisor cannot be main author or uh, principal author you are the principal author and your supervisor can be or may be a, a secondary author or a co-author right and that again depends that uh, what was contribution of your your supervisor um, if like there is no contribution you are not going to put them in uh, in the list of authors but obviously supervisor means like supervisor would uh, would guide you throughout the process and uh, would assist you in in write up or maybe sometimes in uh, putting the things in order or uh, helping you out in data collection and data analysis uh, for, for interpretation uh, interpretation in particular supervisors they they guide you through so uh, but anyhow whatever the case is your supervisor can be or maybe a co-author not the principal author of your 